Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Paul PVP Perez. And in this video, I'm going to be discussing my biggest takeaways from Eric Wall's The Spark and The Grind. If you're a creative type like myself, this is uh, definitely recommended. These are my biggest takeaways from Eric Wall's book, The Spark and The Grind. When Eric Wall was promoting his book, he was on an episode of Gary Vee's podcast. Mr. Wall passionately discussed his struggle to get to this creative point in his life. It was also Mr. Van Uchuk's personal interview style which drew me to the book. I put the book on my Amazon wish list and it stayed there for a while. I purchased the audiobook several months later. I'd listen to it while getting ready for work, a little bit at a time, and when I like a book I will listen to it multiple times to have the idea sink in. These are four of my biggest takeaways from this wonderful book. Number one, Mr. Wall discusses outside influences not being your complete inspiration. He says our vision needs to be unique and uh, our own point of view, um, not simply our spin on things. And for me, this is tough because others inspire most of my content, but I am motivated by this. Tim Schmoyer, a video creator, says something very similar in the realm of YouTube. Uh, he says, nobody wants to see us do the same content as other creators. Make it your own. Say it. Do it your way, which sets you apart from others. Now, in Mark Manson's book, Models, which I did a biggest takeaways to, and I'll leave a link to in the show notes for this episode, he says that when it comes to dating, he encourages to be polarizing. He gives a story... Um, about a guy who says like a graphic thing to women and they either turned away by him or they actually are attracted to him because of this weird sense of humor is um, the example that he gives in a book. But um, he encourages being polarizing because you're being your true self and not doing the same nice guy things as all the other guys are doing. So I found that very interesting. So putting your own spin on things. No, not putting your own spin on things, putting it out your own way in your own voice. Okay. Uh, now, this isn't easy and it requires work, but imagine the particular content that can be produced, the unique content. So that's exciting. Number two, uh, waiting for inspiration to create may happen infrequently. Routines allow creativity to flourish regularly. All right. Now, for the most part, when I hear the word routine, I think boredom. I think uh, like a jello head falling asleep. I'm so bored. But because of the action of routines, I personally have started and finished projects. I usually like to draw during my lunch break at work for about 10 to 15 minutes. And I do this about four to five days of the week consistently. And it has allowed me to produce finished artwork. Um, often... After dinner, when I finally get home from work after dinner, I'll get down to some creative work on the podcast, whether that be writing, editing, or not even creative work, uh, just maybe I'm doing some maintenance on the blog or on the YouTube page or on the podcast feed, you know. Um, finding the holes in your day and committing time to spend a few minutes consistently to focus on a creative pursuit will produce results, and I'm living proof of that. Sometimes I feel guilty because... I uh, procrastinate in the sense of I'll start watching Netflix or watch YouTube after I finish eating. And I just, you know, just like having, I just finished eating all this food. I just have, you know, want to lay down and, and have all the food digested. And then I end up falling asleep, you know, and then I just wake up the next day. But uh, what I'm trying to say by that is I also heard this very interesting thing today on this episode of... Um, John Lee Dumas' EO Fire podcast where he was interviewing a young woman, an, a young, an author of, of, a, of another book called Do Less because I know on this very podcast I did a biggest takeaways for um, Rachel Jonat's Do Less but this is a new book called Do Less where um, the author, I think her name, her name is Kate Northrup, she talks about like how certain points in one cycle, they're more productive than in others. And she said that for men, uh, there's been studies where it shows that from 6 a.m. to 1 p.m., men are the most productive at this time. But after that, uh, not so productive. And um, focus 
um, she said, believe it or not, this lasts about two hours, like really concentrated focus. So um, she suggests like, you know, work for a certain amount of time, take a break, work for a certain amount of time, take a break, like maybe like 45 minutes, an hour and take a break. And then that'll kind of keep uh, one's creativity, one's focus, like kind of fresh, right? But uh, I just found this very interesting, how um, routines and what I'm trying to say by saying all that is that I used to feel guilty about not spending all these hours creating. Like I said, when I would be procrastinating after dinner and just like lying in bed watching TV or watching the tablet. But from hearing that interview today and uh, the John Lee Dumas um, EO Fire episode, which I'll leave a link to in the podcast and the show notes, um, that that's okay. It's okay to, as long as you're doing something consistently on a regular basis, uh, if you do a little bit, a little bit, a little bit every day, that's okay. You don't have to do this humongous, like, you know, masterpiece every single day. No, just a little bit every day until the masterpiece is finished. So I just found that very interesting. Um, the next biggest takeaways was uh, getting out of your comfort zone and having a childlike curiosity will stoke your creative flames. And I talk about this almost all the time lately. Um, it's hard to do this because of the comfort of what you already have established is so good and so easy, right? But uh, Rob Dial, which I mentioned in a few a few podcasts ago, he mentioned on his Mindset and Motivation podcast, he said something which has stayed with me, which I've put up on my wall. And this is to grow, you must do the uncomfortable thing, the thing you don't want to do. And at first, uh, I am resistant when going down this route. But when I commit and I get it done, I feel so glad that I did afterwards. So I encourage you to do the same. Um, as children, we uh, would ask why repeatedly. And this is regarding childhood or having a childlike curiosity. And why don't we do that as adults? Why don't we ask why, 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 why? Um, Tony Robbins says um, that a basic human need is variety. He has this six human needs and one of them is variety and having a childlike curiosity as an adult will bring a diversity of knowledge and make life even more interesting now the final uh, takeaway from uh, eric wall's spark in the grind book was having a job makes it easy to be creative now, I used to demonize personally having a job. I see these entrepreneurs on YouTube and I say, I want to be like them. And I still have that thing where I, it's a big thing I have to work on where I see people on YouTube and I'm like, I want to be like that. I want to do that. I used to demonize having a job and I thought that being the work from home entrepreneur was the end all be all. This wonderful book justified the opposite. It says being employed removes the worries of having to pay bills and merely live while you're pursuing your creative outlets. If you're using your creativity for your work, well, that's meaningful to you and you receive a regular paycheck. That's the best of both worlds, right? Uh, in this scenario, your work becomes your play, but that's not the case for everyone and myself included. Um, if after a day's work, we are spent and have no energy to produce, this is where the routines that I had discussed earlier can come in and put us right on track. Man, I'm tired from work. I just finished eating. I just want to lay down and watch TV and doze off and just repeat this whole thing the next day. Just take 10 or 15 minutes or 20 minutes and work on your little project and then get back to that. But just work on something for a little bit. And by the time you know it, in five or 10 days, that thing will be a bigger thing. It'll be something that's taking shape. So uh, you won't go to sleep with guilty feelings about not producing something. I find the audiobook versions of books um, quicker and uh, easier to consume. And when I get stuck creatively, I'm going to listen to this book again. Because this is how much this book inspired me. And I'm so grateful that Mr. Walt put out this book. And I recommend this book to you. If, did you like my takeaways? If you did... I have another video coming up next, which is The Power of Habit. My biggest takeaways from Charles Duhigg's book, The Power of Habit. Check that out next.